plus years, at some point, you will grow into a very crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode 77. Ooh. Se- I know, right? That's 77 nice. of the Married into Crazy <laughs> podcast. podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I am Lovey. I am Snooks. And Snooks. everyone in the house is almost well. Well, I, I don't know about mentally. Well. I don't know about mentally I'm completely well. well. But completely. Ashanti, well, actually, it's really been Kiki and me. So Kiki, our youngest, was sick. And then she got me sick, and then Zay has been sick, and then Kiki was sick again, and then I was sick again, and then Kiki was sick again this weekend. It's almost like you can't fully get, find that recovery mode. You know what they say? Speaking to the mic, is that what they say? So serious. I'm so sorry. So sincere. So (laughs) sincere. You know what they say, though, how um, twins... How they feel each other's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it would make sense that it would just be you and Kiana that are getting sick. The carrier monkeys. Oh, oh she went there. Okay. I went there. I went there. Okay, well, this is ground zero. If, if, if we're sick and this is ground zero, it's because the house is a mess between the granddaughters. And I want to blame it on Zay, but he, he can't do anything just yet. And the house looks like it's just been an absolute tornado. I mean, there's dust on top of the dust on top of the dust. I know everybody okay, out there is thinking, all, well, then clean something, lovey. Yeah, lovey. First of all. <laughs> no. Anyway. No, that's good. But anyway, so we're trying to get everybody healthy. Um, taking, I mean, we're talking about taking vitamin D3, taking zinc, taking vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams twice a day. I've got some uh, some drops that I'm taking from Dr. Chorns and Valier. Oh my oh God. I'm trying to think, what else am I taking? You sound like an old person. And, and, and these 15 medications, I don't even know what this one does. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me feel good. Oh, whatever. Anyway, so um, that's where we are right now. You can hear my voice a little bit still. That's a combination of that and then yelling at volleyball practice and all that. But um, this is an amazing week. Go ahead. So first, I just want to say shout out to our niece, Kai. Niecy Poo. Niecy Poo. Today's her 21st birthday. 21. And so never been kissed. We... That's a lie. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Put all her business out. Anyway, so just wanted to, we just got off the phone with her. I was like, hey, you better listen because we might give you a shout out. She's like, ooh. I'm like, whatever. So yeah, she's 21 today and it's exciting um, do you remember what it was like when you turned 21? Yeah, I went out. I, I, do you remember exactly what you did, though? I did. I went out to shenanigans in Jack London Square in Oakland. 21st birthday. My 21st birthday was spent at RAF Woodbridge over in England. And that evening, the, the, the libations began to flow at 9.30 a.m. promptly, for some reason. And we did not finish. I should say, I did not finish until I was under the table at the club in RF Woodbridge. Oh, this is so funny. Okay, this isn't funny, it's kind of gross. Well, if it's nasty. No, it's not, it's not nasty know. nasty, but it's like, okay, this is how you know this that. This is nasty. It's this is how nasty, I hope my nasty. niece does not celebrate this way. So we're at RF Woodbridge over in England, and there's this, um, there's twin bases, RF Woodbridge and RF Bentwaters. Uh, RAF stands for Royal Air Force. And Ooh, I remember I fell asleep because they said, you can't sleep on the table. So then I crawled under the table and went to, I was trying to fall asleep on the ground. ground. Yeah, and then on base. This is on base, which is probably even worse. And so then... <laughs> I was like, ew. <laughs> I remember walking outstairs. They said, you need to go outside and get some air. So I remember going outside, walking around, thinking, okay, I gotta get some air, I gotta get some air. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm gonna get sick. And again, this is pre-Lovey. This is back when... Lovey was living in the dark. So there's this huge, you know, those garbage bins that the big trucks come and they like, and they put their arms (laughs) through it and they pick it up. So those big dumpsters. I don't know, a dumpster? A dumpster, yeah. (laughs) No, that thing. So in the dumpster. (laughs) Wait, wait, you do your 
hard. You put your arm in. Oh, I know. So, okay, sorry. I remember leaning over into the dumpster to to vomit, basically. Did you fill in? Nope, didn't fall in. Okay, I'm about to throw up right now. That was my last memory until base police came over, woke me up. If you ever look at something just like how you take a blanket and just kind of lay it over the edge of something, that was me. I leaned into the garbage, the, the dumpster, to vomit and passed out. And the police woke me up saying, hey, are you drunk on station? Nope, I was just taking a nap. What? And it, I, I was doubled over the dumpster. And so they said, well, either you go back inside. This is how bad it was if you think about it. They found a guy doubled over a dumpster who had apparently vomited or passed out and threatened to actually give me being drunk on station. But rather than give me the ticket or take me into jail, they were like, you have a choice. We can either take you in or you go back in the club. They just encouraged me to go back in there and drink some more. So anyway, that was my 21st birthday. <laughs> and so you, you followed their advice? And I went back to the club. <laughs> and started drinking again? And I felt better. Wow. Will you drink, did you drink more? Uh, that part's kind of sketchy. kind of blurry. <laughs> That part's sketchy. Don't recall what happened. But um, so that so okay, Nisi Poo, if you're listening, I hope that was not your twenty first, either. No, it's not because I, my sis is not gonna allow. Oh, that's that. true. No, that's true. Her mom would have a fit. But you know what's so funny though? I remember when Kai was well, obviously I remember when she was first born. But so Wednesday is Ashanti's twentieth birthday. So Kai and Ashanti are a year and two days apart. On Kai's first birthday, I remember I was fixing up the nursery and Rashida came over and she gave me like blankets and some t-shirts and stuff that Kai had grown, had grown out of. So I'm in the room doing like just doing fine tuning stuff for the nursery and Kai's in there messing with everything and I'm like, Kai, <laughs> stop Kai. <laughs> She's busy. Kai, stop. She's oh, still she busy. was so busy. She's still she busy. so busy. She was so cute though. Is, and Rashida had went and took had pictures of her taken. I remember her outfit, everything that she had on. Anyway, that's crazy. I won't say it's crazy, Who's but who's first? So Kai's the oldest. Kai's the oldest. So it goes Kai, Shanti, no, and no, Justine. No, no, no. Kai, Justine, and then Ashanti. When's Justine's birthday? August. So when Kai was born. Oh, that's right. That's in right. Ninety nine, August. Justine was born, and then Ashanti was born. These were the cheetah girls. Yes. They love the Cheetah Girls. And then Kiki came. And then, yeah, she jacked it and all they, up. No, it was four Cheetah Girls. I know, but no, but, but Kiki, yeah. she came out the womb, swear she ran things. Yep. So anyway, uh, always around this time, I get very nostalgic uh, because of the lead up to, I still remember everything that happened for, you know, with the Shanti. So this was our last normal, I won't say normal, but last day of everything being fine because the next day which is tomorrow i went to the we went to the doctor's appointment tell that story <laughs> tell that story i think i told this story before anyway went to the doctor's appointment it was like our last official doctor's appointment um because ashanti was actually born on her due date both the girls were but she was actually born on her due date so we went to the doctor um lovey met me there and so we go in to get checked out and stuff and so something wasn't feeling or sounding right to them I, I felt fine she said well, I need you to go down to labor and delivery and I was like okay why you know I, I automatically I get really scared I was ready to have her but I was really afraid that something was going on because just of the issues that we had during the whole pregnancy with her so we go down there and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, oh, we have the baby, blah, 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 whatever. So <laughs> the nurse came, not the nurse, but the doctor came. And so she was like, okay, so how would you like to have your baby today? And I was like, okay, why? She said, well, she doesn't have enough, There were, there's not enough water sacks around her to... Um, there was zero, from what they could detect? No, there, she, there, was, there almost, was like two. There, there was, was almost, like two. There was almost... Zero. Yeah, it was almost. I don't know how, what the heck was going on, but so I freaking panicked and started crying because I thought that meant that something was going on or something was going wrong with the baby. And she was like, "No, no, no," you know. So we would rather induce you and you know so on and so forth to uh, make sure that you have a safe delivery than to let you go out. So 
went there home. There wasn't enough to load the baby. Got our stuff, and then we went to but the I had hospital. A, I had a go bag for her ready to go. Well, it wasn't completely full. Oh, you had the go bag? I had it. I set it up. That's right. Lovey was on the ball. Okay, anyway, so we say all that to say we always celebrate Kai's, well, today's Kai's birthday, and then two days later, it's Ashanti's birthday. So on Wednesday, it will be, when this comes out, our baby will be turning 20 years old. And every time we talk about her turning 20 years old, I like to point out the fact that you she could have been have sponsored. Okay. She could have been sponsored. She was supposed to be born. I was trying to have her born sooner <laughs> because the NBA was having the, uh, the All-Star game in San Francisco. Oh, Oakland. Well, Oakland, same thing. It's the San Francisco okay. Warriors. <laughs> so, if we could, I, just, I kept telling her, we could buy tickets and then we can go to the game and if you have the baby in the middle of the NBA All-Star Weekend in the gym, I guarantee that we in could get gym? like some sponsorship. Yeah. It could have been in like, Coliseum? we could have sold off it's name rights. Gym. The whole nine yards. We could have been like, okay. Well, we get Pampers for life. I'm like, well, she's not going to need Pampers all her life. Her name, so. We could have been like, so what are you going to name her? Well, we gave the rights away to the Golden State Warriors. Her name's Goldie. Yeah, <laughs> she would have been no. Goldie. That would have been hilarious. But we would still be getting broke off. Still getting paid. No, we wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And anyway. 20 years later. It would have been good. That, we could have got diapers out of the deal. We could have had all kinds of baby food. The whole nine yards. The NBA, the weekend, was. it's always around Valentine's Day, whatever. So it was literally 11 days before she was born. I'm just saying, it. when I knew the date, I'd try to get her to have the baby sooner. But like anything else, she didn't Because I listen. could just push a button and she would come it out. It could be done. Zane was two and a half months early, almost, well, no, three months early. I'm just talking a couple of weeks. Don't look at me like that. A couple of weeks, she would still be getting paid. Anyway, I would have been getting paid as her agent. <laughs> okay. So anyway, right. uh, but no, her birthday is this week, so we're going to be celebrating um, our eldest, my favorite oldest daughter's favorite birthday. Oldest daughter's birthday, and she, she's like, "Mom, I think I want to party." I was like, "No." Well, Mom, I'm going to be gone for my 21st birthday, so I'm like, "Where are you going?" She's going to be away at college. So I was like, "Oh, okay, I forgot about that." Yeah, so I think that I should have a party no. this year for... I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, anyway, nice try, though. Right, but not nice happening. Nice try. So, I wanted to talk about something. A um, couple months, not a couple months ago, I'm sorry, a couple weeks ago, we had... Um, I think we told you all that we, we did our first Married into Crazy Couples talk. It was a talk. No, it wasn't like not a, a crazy talk. 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 But, no, but we no, were invited to the church I to talk. Married and crazy because it was both of us. It was, we, and it was our first time speaking talking together. together. Yeah, we've both individually spoken before at church, and so on the what day was that? It was the ninth. It was the ninth. Yeah. Prior to Valentine's Day. February 9th, we we spoke t uh, together um, about the message in church. So family was there and everything. So my mom. I was at my mom's house because I had to uh, take her to a doctor's appointment and my brother had come over and we sat down and we started talking a little bit and he was saying how he really enjoyed the talk and he was like, dang, sis, he said, I, I never knew that uh, you and uh, you and bruh, because I love you, bruh, he said, dang, <laughs> just pound, <laughs> chest pound, I'm sorry. She's like, he's like, dang, sis, I never know that you and uh, you and bruh was going went through it like that and i was like what are you talking about he's like i'm talking about like the what what you were saying in your um the, in the message and stuff about Divorce. the history what happened and everything he was like i knew that you know y'all had some issues or whatever he's like but i didn't realize that y'all was like like right there like ready to get divorced and stuff and i kind of laughed i was like yeah i said you know it's a funny thing i said it was like it was known but Maybe it wasn't so much known as far as like, we didn't just go around telling everybody, yeah, we're, we're breaking up or whatever. Cause he's like, cause it seemed like y'all was still like kind of cool to me. And I said, well, we don't get mad like you get mad. So, you know, our relationships don't go like yeah, yours. Yeah, don't try to put it on blast. Right, I said, but yeah, you know, so he was like, so, and then I'm listening to you 
what what you said and 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 he was like i thought that was pretty cool or kind of brave i think that how a bro was like you know he was like maybe i was a little bit of a mama's boy he said but it wasn't mama's boy like how we think mama's boy is more like he was trying to please his mom and blah, blah blah and i was like yeah that's exactly what it was so he was trying to he's like i feel that though trying to be into almost like trying to please too many people at one time whatever He's like, but, you know, to, to let it go that far, though, you know, and I was like, well, everyone's different. And he's like, I, I don't even see, I can't even see really how, like, you would want to get divorced over, you know, whatever. If we just talked about, he's like, did you guys ever talk, basically got down to, did, did you guys ever talk about, like, what was bothering you? He goes, because I know, you know, y'all seem like the kind of couple that, you sit and you talk about everything. And, and I started laughing. I said, well, that's that's us now, you know. Right. I said, but that wasn't really us in the very beginning because though I had, I felt some kind of way about certain things and Lovey also felt some kind of way about certain things. We didn't really have um, the conversations that we should have had. We talked about what our values were. We talked about um, what was important to us in a relationship and about kids. And we kind of... We didn't even go deep, deep, deep when talking about how we want to raise our children and stuff. I said, but we did talk. I said, but we avoided a lot of stuff, you know. And I said, and he was like, well, dang, I, I can't do that because if I feel some, I said, we know you, you flash and you, you know, kind of laughed about it. But really, because he was like, so, you know, what, what was it that made you not talk about or made you not get out, get it out or what? you know, what kept the conversation from happening. And I was like, you know, it's, it's funny. It, it was a difficult conversation probably to have, you know. I said it was difficult on on both, on two parts. Difficult for me, or let me talk Lovey first. Difficult for Lovey to more or less say, probably to me and his mom, look, either get it together or whatever, you know. Um, Quit tripping about my mama because he never said anything like that. He never told his mom, leave my wife alone, or you know, he didn't say anything like that. So, but it was, uh, I was just was, playing with the baby. <laughs> this is before she was born. I'm talking about Kaylin. Oh, <laughs> but you know, it was, it was difficult to, it was very uncomfortable and it was very difficult to have conversation about what the real issue was. So, we talked about that and you know he's like oh, I bet a lot of couples are like that you know and I said yeah I said a lot of couples are, are kind of like that I, I think just from what I've heard from people talking to me you know it's like how do you how do you deal with an uncomfortable having an uncomfortable or difficult conversation with someone Be, you know why do you avoid it and what we see for us where avoiding it got us what it got us how it affected our relationship, you know, but so many people, I feel like that's just their, that's their language. That's how they deal. That's their communication. They just don't do it. They bypass it. They go around it because I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to um, get her upset. I don't want him to get mad. So things that need to be discussed sometimes aren't. Well, it's funny you say that because as you were talking, I was thinking that you said that's their form of communication or whatever. and Avoidance. Avoidance. Mm -hmm. But in, in all actuality, um, when silence is a form of communication, it's almost like you give life to the unspoken. The, you, know, you're, you're si you say your silence speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. You've heard that phrase before. And a lot of times that avoidance piece, it's so much easier to just avoid something than face it directly. Particularly when you're not quite sure, if you're not quite confident in your voice. If I, I wasn't confident as a husband. And where I was confident was, actually, I don't even know. I, I would say I was confident as a son because I had, of course, all these years of being a son. Hmm. But was I confident as an adult? As a married son. As a married son and as an adult male. Mm -hmm. Um in the respect that, you know, how am I supposed to call out and address the woman that, that sacrificed so much for me mm -hmm. as I was growing up? So I don't know. I don't know if, um, I, I'm pretty sure many couples go through it unless you are just one of those super well put together 
people that I think is relatively rare. You might be great on your own, like independent woman, independent male, got it going on job, got everything, got your house, got your, you know, apartment, whatever. You got all this stuff together. But then when you come together, it, it almost knocks down all the walls and you're starting all over again. And I think that sometimes can either cause a, a, a lack of confidence 